I'm here again today. I'm going to be talking about making some stone tools. So is it possible to do primitive fire with absolutely no knife? Yes, it is. In fact, it's possible to do many things in the field, especially in a survival situation, without a knife. A lot of stone can actually be used, especially this piece of my hammer stone that broke off. And this can be scouted and found on the ground anywhere. You don't have to look for specific stones. As long as it breaks with a sharp edge, you can make a stone tool. Now this in particular would be more of a discoid blade than a shaped blade. You can see you still get notches. My stone tool kit usually consists of a small leather pad, an antler tine, and a hammer stone. Three pieces that I can literally roll up and shove in my pocket. I can put them in my pack, put them wherever I need to go. I don't have all this extra crap that I have to carry around with me. And that also just depends on what I'm doing. Most cases, I already have the stuff with me that I need, so I don't need to do this. However, it's fun to practice. Now what I'm using, and I'm not sure if I'm even really gonna get to all of these, but this is a piece of obsidian. This is a piece of mahogany obsidian. This is a piece of chert. These two are pieces of common opal. Now in the past, I've done videos like this. I've gone out, I've made tools, and I've shown you how I personally get these done. And right here, it's a little wide, but even a piece like this is usable. Ooh, hammerstone's breaking. I have to go down to the creek and find another. Okay, so basically I have a flake. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shape it into something that will allow me to cut a piece of wood for a hand drill spindle. For that, I use my leather. And I'm basically doing this to prove to you that you don't have to go off and know a ton about flint napping to get a usable tool to get the job done. All I'm doing is I'm going along the edge right now and I'm just thinning it down, snapping off little spots. I'm gonna have to flip that one over to get it. It's like so. And no, I do not need to abrade this stone. There's no reason for it. There's like a little bulb here that I'm gonna try to break through, just like so, slowly and easily. Go from side to side just break through it. And I'm going to end up having to dull the other side because that's where my finger is going to go. And I don't want to cut myself while I'm using it. Sensing a little bit more of a... There it goes. That came off. So this side is going to be the cutting side. There, that came off. Now it's just like when I am napping nice points. I have broken them. It happens. It's just the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and dull up that other side.
And what this will do, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's taking these tiny, tiny little flakes and knocking them off so it's not sharp. Oh yeah, this is going to work nicely. This side's dull, this side's sharp. Cool. And there's my handle. It doesn't need to be any bigger than this. Now when you're using a stone tool like this, you're going to score all the way around first. Hopefully the wind isn't too big of an issue out here today. You can see here that it's getting through. And then from here, it's a simple snap. That's it. There's a handrail spindle. You can even make it more jagged if you want, just so that it's like a sawtooth. You come to a spot where it doesn't want to break, switch sides, and then hit the platform on the other side. Most of the time, if it's not too rounded, it'll come right off. Other times, it takes a little bit of persuasion. I'm curious to see how many experts come out of the woodwork on this video. Almost like a saw blade. You can see just how well this saws through here. It's small, yet very effective. It almost gives the perfect angle for the notch in your fireboard. You can also go one step further. You can take your stone and add a point. Now the reason why I would do this and I'm even breaking it further down, you want the thicker stone, not the thin stuff around the edge. There's a definite reason for that, because if you get farther in, your stone is gonna be much stronger. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about as soon as I'm finished. And what I'm doing is turning this into a completely different tool for a completely different purpose. All right, so I'm gonna call this good. I could go a lot further and do a lot more. However, I wanna show you exactly what this is for. So I'm gonna take right here, all I'm gonna do is just drill into my fireboard just like so. Just like that. And it puts a hole in. Now it's not perfectly straight, but it doesn't really have to be. On the coarse side of a stone, simply grind it down like sandpaper. And it really doesn't take that much work. It goes a lot quicker than you think it does. You basically want to get it down to where your end is going to fit in the hole. So now let's burn this out. Now we can come back and finish shaping the notch. <laughs> you 
kind of split on me a little no big deal there we go all right now there we go now let's see if we can at least get an ember this is a lot skinnier than i'm used to using so i'm basically going to take the time to heat it up first go kind of slow there we go Let's see some of that smoke not bad looky there cool kind of pretty isn't it there we go still smoking on its own and I'd say you can't argue with results like that now purpose of this video was to show you that you don't have to have the perfect tools the perfect conditions and everything just to get a primitive fire you can use stone tools to get the hand drill or even the bow drill to work now that's outside the box thinking